Okay, so our objective now in this lecture is to introduce more circle. And really, the first thing we're going to do is confirm for ourselves that we can represent these transformation equations graphically using more circle. Then we're going to apply that to the numerical example that we just looked at. Okay, so let's start off by thinking about our transformation equations. Now, the statement I'm going to make is that our transformation equations can be represented graphically with more circle, right? And I've been saying all along that this is a fast and intuitive way to get a sense of the stress field at a particular point. Um, all I mean by that is we can get a sense of how the stresses are varying at a particular point um, as we change that angle of orientation. So let's uh, let's kick this thing off here by starting off and just we're just going to restate our transformation equations just to get them back on the same page here. So that was our first transformation equation that we worked out. And let's just get the, the shear transformation equation down here as well. The first thing that we are going to do is we're going to slightly rearrange transformation equation 1. Okay, so I'm going to say that's going to be sigma x1. I'm just going to take that first term on the right of the equal sign and bring it over to the left. So I'll say minus sigma x plus sigma y over 2 and that's equal to everything that was left over on the right hand side there. All right, let's call that transformation equation 1a, right? Because we've just we've 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 altered it slightly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take transformation equation 1a and transformation equation 2, all right? And I'm going to square them and add them together, right? So square them and add them together. So that means let me see, if I take the square of transformation equation 1a, right, or the left-hand side of it, that would just be, bear with me now, this is going somewhere, sigma x1 minus sigma x plus sigma y over 2. All right, so take that, square it, add it to equation TE2 squared, which just means add that to tau x1 y1 squared. All right, so we've essentially, we've essentially added the left hand side of that and the left hand side of that right so that's this piece here and now we're going to add you know the right hand side of the equal sign obviously is going to require us to take this to take this and add it to this or square it and add it now that is quite a headache to do or at least i find that quite a headache to do now i'm going to i'm going to just make a statement here and then i'll go ahead and confirm it for you right so that's going to equal when you square the the two pieces in the green box and you add them together you're going to end up with sigma x minus sigma y over 2 to be squared plus tau xy to be squared so that's what happens when you add the square of the elements in the green boxes you get this now you might say to yourself well how have you gone from you know squaring both of these green boxes and adding them together down to this well you can get there event you know you can get there by you know just basically slogging your way through it and ultimately working it down to this expression here now what i like to do in these scenarios is jump back over to my jupyter notebook and i like to uh, do a little bit of symbolic math over in Python. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm letting Python do the hard work for me, right? So I'm going to jump over. We'll jump over to the notebook and I will confirm that statement on the right-hand side, not by longhand working it out, but by coding up the solution really, really quickly. So bear with me now. We'll just jump over to the notebook and pick up the conversation there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is a little bit of symbolic mathematics in order, well, we're not going to do it, we're going to let uh, Python do it for us, but it, this is a very um, handy little tool, which I use quite a lot, actually, um, when I don't really want to sort of slog my way through a lot of algebraic manipulation, right? So first of all, I'm going to import, I'm going to import SymPy as sim so simpy is just a a tool or a, a python library that allows us to do this uh, symbolic mathematics all right then uh, now the first thing that you're going to need to do is define some symbols right so i'm going to want a symbol uh, for sigma x i'm just going to let sx represent sigma x now i need to define that as a symbolic symbol right so that's going to be sim dot symbol and I'm going to pass into that, I'm going to pass into that sx, and I'm going to call this, this is going to be sigma x. 
All right, we're going to do something similar for y and similar for tau xy. So this is going to be sy, and this is defining sy. I kept them as lower cases, I think. And then we want tau xy. So I'll say that's going to be tx and y, and then it'll have a lower case txy here. This isn't, you know, it doesn't have to be a lowercase here and uh, uppercase here. It's just how I happen to have written it this time. Now what I want is a symbol for theta. All right, so now I can go ahead and actually build up my expression, right? So if you remember, we had one expression squared and added to another expression squared. So I'm just going to define those as expression a. All right, now that was going to be the right hand side, what was left on the right hand side of transformation equation 1a. Right, and that was going to be sigma x minus sigma y over 2 times the cosine of 2 theta plus tau xy times the sine of 2 theta. All right, so you'll notice here as well, when I'm calling cosine, I'm calling cosine from the sim library, right, from the SimPy library. So I'm not just typing in, I'm not just typing in cosine here, I'm typing in sim.cosine because I've imported that library as SYM and I'm reaching into that library and I'm extracting out what it uses for cosine or what it defines as its cosine. And then of course all the other terms I've got in here in this equation are the symbols that I've defined up here, right? So you're just building the expression using the symbols that you've defined. And then we had our other expression, which was going to be expression B. And that was the right hand side of transformation equation two. And it's basically the same idea, right? So we're just building up that expression. Now, let's define expression C, right? Which is ultimately the expression we want to evaluate as being expression A squared plus expression B squared. All right. So let me print that. Let me print expression C. Now ultimately expression C is what we're looking for, right? So let me see what happens when I print it. Right, so I get this big long expression and you know that is technically correct. That is that is all of this squared added to all of this squared. No problems there, but it's not really very pretty to look at. It's not very easy. Well, you know, it's not that hard to interpret, but it's a bit ugly, right? So the next little trick that we can use instead of just printing out the expression straight away as it's being uh, as it has been determined initially, we can simplify it. We can say to SimPy, hey, take this expression that you just worked out, try and make it simple, right? Try and simplify it down, try and condense it down. And I'm gonna pass into sim.simplify expression C, and I've just, I've just contained all of this within my print statement, right? So we get this out at the end, now see what happens. Excellent, right? We've simplified this thing right down. So what we're going to do now is take this back over into our notebook, right? So what is this? This is sigma x squared over 4 minus sigma x times sigma y over 2 plus sigma y squared over 4 plus tau xy squared. Right, jump back over into our notepad now. All right, so what did our what did our adventures in Python give us, right? It gave us on the right-hand side, it evaluated sigma the right hand side evaluated to sigma x squared over 4 minus sigma x times sigma y over 2 plus sigma y squared over 4 plus tau x y squared. All right then. So, well, let's look at this. So far, so good, right? So we can take that guy and that guy. So we've got that part out, which means that all of this must equal all of this and sure enough actually that is the case because you can take you can take all of that there and you absolutely can represent it as sigma x minus sigma y over 2 to be squared so if you square that you're going to end up with this expanded expression up here so i mean all we've done here is we've said yes okay you can take what's in this green box up here square it you can add it to what's in this green box squared add all of that together crunch it right down, simplify it as simple as you can make it, and you will end up with, you will end up with this guy here, all of this stuff in here. Right, let's go ahead and define, well, we already have defined this previously, but we're gonna call it or this time instead of, instead of H, right? So we're gonna say or squared is equal to sigma X minus sigma Y over two to be squared plus 
tau x y to be squared previously we would have called that h squared but can you know seeing as though we're thinking about a circle now and this is going to be the radius of that circle we'll call it or and let's also define let's also define sigma x plus sigma y over 2 as being equal to sigma average we've also seen that before right so when we take these two things right and we sub them and replace them up here in this equation what do we get we get this just so happens to be the equation of a circle right so that guy there in that orange box is the equation of a circle it's let me just write that down with origin right the origin of the circle is located at sigma average zero it has a radius our radius, the radius of our circle is or, and it has coordinates, or the coordinates of the of a point on the circle are, let me just say, coords are sigma x1 and tau x1, y1. Right, let's just relate that back to how you might be used to seeing a circle, the, the equation of a circle. So if I imagine an xy plane here, something like this, very straightforward, and I imagine some center of a circle here, and that center very often is given the coordinates or the symbols h and k, and we very often call the radius of a circle or, and if I was to draw that circle, the equation of that circle would be, would be, and this is the xy plane, so the equation would be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equal to r squared. So that's the equation of that circle where that's the x coordinate and that's the y coordinate. Now we relate that back to our equation which we've just worked out. Well we've got sigma x1 minus sigma average to be squared which is obviously that piece plus tau x1 y1 minus zero to be squared and that's obviously that piece and then we have that equal to or squared. So the capital R squared in our equation from our, from our transformation equations obviously corresponds with the radius of a circle, which is that guy there. All right then, so we're getting, we're getting close now, right? So what we're basically able to say is there is a process whereby we can, with very limited information, we can construct Moore's circle. And that Moore's circle, every point on that circle is going to be a state of stress. It's going to be a stress at some orientation within our structure. So the task usually is when you're faced with something like this, when you've got some stresses, and you, and you have enough information to build more circle is you go ahead and build the circle and then you can see visually looking at the circle you can work out what all of the key stresses are right and so that's what we're going to see now so what are the steps to building this circle because it's a fairly formulaic process right what do you do well imagine if we know we'll just say it's going to be a little bit of writing here but i think it's probably worth getting this out longhand so if we know sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, we can plot more circle and visualize the full 2D stress field. All right, so what are the steps? What are the steps? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna let the x1 axis be positive to the right, right? And the tau x1, y1 axis is gonna be our y axis and it's gonna be positive downwards. So that is the convention we are going to use. So sigma x1 is going to be our x-axis. I mightn't have said that the first time. So sigma x1 is going to be our x-axis positive to the right. And tau x1 y1 will be our y-axis positive downwards. The reason you, you will sometimes see the, the tau x1 y1 axis positive upwards, right? Now, the reason we take tau... The, 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 the vertical axis, the tau x1, y1 axis, the reason we make the downward direction positive is because that means that a the, the sense, I mentioned this in the previous lecture, but the sense of rotation on our circle, right, is going to match the same sense of rotation on our element, right? So if we were to rotate our element, uh, let's say counterclockwise by, let's say, I don't know, 30 degrees, in order to see that same or to experience the or identify the stresses on those planes, right, we would, well, it turns out we'd rotate our circle, we'd rotate around our circle by actually 60 degrees. But the point I'm trying to make is we would rotate counterclockwise as well. So a counterclockwise rotation of our element corresponds to a counterclockwise rotation of our circle and vice versa. Uh, now, those two 
directions are flipped are opposite right if you take your tau x1 y1 axis as positive upwards so we're taking it positive downwards all right so the second step once we've sort of set our set our axes the second step is to locate the center of the circle so that has coordinates of sigma average and zero then the next thing we do is we locate point we're let's call it point a right so let's locate point a and that has that has coordinates sigma x1 equal to sigma x and remember we we the premise is here that we know what sigma x is before we start and it has the vertical or you know tau x1 y1 coordinate equal to tau xy and again premise is we understand or we know what tau xy is before we start now this corresponds to the stress on face A. Then we're going to locate point B uh, on the circle and that corresponds to the stress on the adjacent perpendicular Y face. Okay, so that little symbol there is just a shorthand for perpendicular. All right, so now we're going to note that faces A and B, this is important, this is one of the key points, faces A and B are 90 degrees, are at 90 degrees to each other, right? They're mutually perpendicular on our element. But this is represented as 180 degrees on our circle. And we're going to see that now as well. So the, 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 the overall point here is that a rotation of our element by theta degrees would correspond to a rotation of two theta on Moore's circle. That is one of the sort of key things you need to um, you need to lock in. So let's just get that note down. So note that faces A and B are 90 degrees to each other, but this is represented as 180 degrees on Moore's circle. And then the sort of tag on point there is that, a, in fact, this is so important, let me draw this in a different color. So the rotation, rotation of our element by theta corresponds to two theta on Moore's circle. Okay, and so point B, we've said locate point B, but point B has coordinates, sigma y and minus tau xy. Okay, and that makes sense to us. So the best way to move this thing along is to consider the previous example that we had, but we'll solve it using Moore's circle. 